Hi, and welcome to Total Recall. I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, and Fantastic Four Grand Design. I'm Matt Zioli. And you can follow me on Twitter, at Tom Scholey, and you can check out uh, the comics I'm working on at Patreon. Just search uh, Tom Scioli at patreon.com. You can follow me on Instagram at cinema underscore two. And uh, so today we're going to talk about, like, we watched the uh, and reviewed the uh, in in uh, my favorite episode so far. Yeah, same here. Uh, uh, the, the, we we did the the uh, un 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 uh, aired <laughs> pilot higher ground that John Denver did, where where he's like the ultimate badass. He's he's like a you know a, 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 a tough guy, hard boiled detective, uh, FBI agent, I think, who um, you know intimidates and and he just like kind of like bullies. Martin Cove, Martin Cove. <laughs> puts him in a headlock and like <laughs> at minute yeah, five of, yeah. of the episode. Yeah, uh, so uh, we we had emasculates some fun. him <laughs> completely emasculates him. and then emasculates <laughs> him like from beyond the grave like like when his character dies uh, when Martin Cove's character dies he like just takes over his life mm, yeah. and, and again like he, this isn't like one of those like thrillers where like John Denver's like a stalker yeah. who like t- it's like no John Denver is the hero he's like the clear. A hero, we're supposed to like, uh, like worship him. I yeah. think. Yeah, uh, he's wearing a leather jacket for pretty much the whole movie. <laughs> yeah, putting people in arm bars. Yeah, yeah, just just Martin Cove, who's a whole head taller than him. Like he's got. A- <laughs> <laughs> it takes place in this, um, this like alternate universe where, like, when people see uh, uh, John Denver walk by, they just start like shaking. shaking. <laughs> But anyway, uh, you know, you stop what you're doing and watch our um, yeah. So watch our higher ground episode and then watch higher ground. But um, <laughs> so that kind of got us in the mood for like more pilots. So so we're gonna you know talk about some other you know TV shows that that didn't didn't make it to the air but um, are are noteworthy for various reasons. There were, the one that we're gonna feature uh, Heat Vision and Jack from the late yeah. '90s with Jack Black. I first heard about it in Entertainment Weekly magazine. Okay. I can't remember what it it, it was covering, and um, it might have, must have been something with like Jack Black or something. But like, I kind of remember when YouTube's like the mm-hmm. it might have been one of the first videos I ever watched on right, YouTube. Yeah, uh, was the, uh, the the pilot for Heat Vision and Jack, and uh, I saw the the intro of it first. It's like just this great like looks like an Adult Swim show. Kind of like before that genre was like firmly established. Yes, way ahead of its time, and it was by um, I want to say uh, Dan Harmon. It was uh, like Scud Disposable Assassin. I think was involved. Yeah, the, his writing partner wrote Scud Disposable Assassin. Okay. Yeah. It um so He Vision Jack was written by uh, Dan Harmon, who created Rick and Morty, uh, Community, um, and Rob Schrab. Yeah. Who did uh, that? What was the comic? Uh, yes, Scott the Disposable Assassin, which was like that was like a big deal. Like when I was like I think in college, like Scud was like a big deal, and and just like the visual was like very uh, like very nineties, very kind of like I need to read that. I've never read Scud the Disposable Assassin. Yeah, he, you know he sort of he did that for a while, and then like got a career as like you know like Hollywood writer that kind of took off. So he he like kind of you know put Scud the Disposable Assassin to, to the side for a while and but then like eventually like came back to it at some point in like the early 2000s and, and like finished the story oh, yeah. and released like a big you know omnibus or whatever that, that like you know you know collected yeah. the whole thing and those guys did like Channel 101 it was like a like a thing where folks would work on like fake pot like pilots mm-hmm. <laughs> and submit I think we have a Channel 101 possibility with a Involves a little vehicular action in a. Oh yeah, right. it would be a. <laughs> yeah, I, an amazing. Now I realize one. the thing that we we we've been talking about um, working on, working on together it, it, it would kind of like be in the tradition of like of a Channel. Heat Vision and Jack kind of. Yeah. So um, yeah, Heat Heat Vision and Jack. You know, it was like Jack Black before he broke really big. It was like Owen Wilson before he broke big. So it was like all this star power. Probably if it had like come out a couple years later it would have been a definite go oh maybe, yeah maybe even like a full movie or something Heck yeah and you're right like it's ahead of it ahead of its time because before adults like it it just looks like something that has always been featured on adult swim but like it has no real home <laughs> like, yeah 
And those opening credits that you're talking about are like so great. And because you're seeing clips of what would have been like I, other episodes. Oh, and there's like a werewolf. That was my about to say. Yeah. Jack Black's punching out like Bravo Fox from Zoomily <laughs> Zoo. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. like, Psh! and the werewolf's like frozen. It's sort so like the premise is that it's like it's like one of those like Knight Rider kind of shows, uh, but like completely absurd. And like, um, you know, Jack Black is part of this like you know experiment or whatever and then um and then like i think his like best friend who's like owen wilson, owen wilson. gets like he gets his like brain trapped inside like a moped Motorc- yeah, yeah like a motorcycle and um, like a talking motor so like oh, so they have good. like banter back and forth so funny and like in the opening credits he's like knowledge is power for real <laughs> <laughs> and jack black's like wearing this like jumps this like super like form-fitting it's jumpsuit so good and jack black like you know He's got enough charisma and, like, muscles in his face that he can, like, show up in something and kind of, like, coast on that. Yeah. He's doing good work in this yeah, pilot. Yeah, he's selling it. Because I was, like, getting kind of... Ch- <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was getting almost, ch- but not quite, choked up when he was talking about Owen Wilson getting, like, transformed into the motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is moving me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, good job, Jack. Which, again, like, those... Th- like. That's sort of, like, at this point, that's, like, a well-worn kind of thing of, like, you know, continual tone changes in sort of, you know, comedic pieces where things get super serious and then insane and stuff. And again, like, it's like a, a, you know, like, too many cooks or something. It's like, you know, it's like, um, you know, this sort of, like, um, you know, adult swim, like, genre, but this was, like, before that. Way ahead, and, and and also the Tom Jones music in the opening credit cracks me the hell up. <laughs> it's so good, it's so funny, so inventive, and like, like, and I enjoy. I even enjoy like the genre. Stuff. Like I even enjoy the sci-fi yeah. of it. You know, aside from like you know the absurdity and 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 play for laughs. It, it, it's it's um, it's like uh, you know, the the person with the superpower and the guy somebody's. Hot on their trail, tracking them down. Right, yeah, like the Hulk, or the something. Hulk, the Hulk TV it, show. They pulled it at the end of the of the uh, He Vision Jack when uh, I was waiting for the David Banner like mm-hmm. music to kick in. He's like, I've got to hit the dusty trail. <laughs> you know, there's so many like shitty TV shows that get like a full season, or and it's like all we have is just this one pilot episode. Like, couldn't they... Like, and it's a super low-budget show, too. Like, yeah. they get so... Much, like, because that's part of the point, is, like, these, like, just really bad 80s special effects. It, like, you know, we were talking about Martin Cove on that, <laughs> that John Denver episode, and it does feel like uh, the, the effects from, like, Hard Time on Planet Earth, yeah. or, like, um, or Benji Zacks and the Alien Prince, you know, like, one of those, like, kind of, like, uh, live-action Saturday morning, you know, cartoon Oh, my shows. God. Like... It, it was cracking me up too when, uh, like, the motorcycle, like you said, the low budget, like, it's not filming it below, like, you don't see the bottom of it, and yeah. it kind of, like, cruises through, like, the saloon door. <laughs> I'm, <just laughs> like, I'm like, that gag is is great. And, and the jokes still hold up. Yeah. Like, they still hold up. Like, uh, uh, Ben Stiller in the cold open, he's, like, talking, like, doing, like, a parody of himself, and he mentions, like, episode one, Phantom Menace. Uh-huh. I'm like, still funny. They mentioned Time Cop. <laughs> when he hits the um, jukebox, starts playing uh, semi Tron Life by Third Eye Blind. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That, that that kind of stuff that has aged well. <laughs> like it, it is. It is like infuriating. Like why isn't there like like a week's worth? Of, like why aren't there like five episodes of this? What you know? What why isn't there a whole season? Of, like just you know, I don't know if they were pitching it to like Fox or who they were pitching it, to, but it's like just. Just give them a couple bucks to, like, do that full... But it's like, no, all we have is this, like, sterling, genius, beautiful, you know, 28-minute, you know, or whatever it is, uh, you know, pilot. Tom, wouldn't it be funny if uh, Jack Black and Owen Wilson and uh, Ben Stiller and everyone, um, like, they just decided to finish the series or Mm -hmm. get a season now? You know, I mean, there was a moment in time where, like... The, the like all three of them like their careers were red hot oh, yeah. and they probably could have like like that gotten a uh, Heat Vision and Jack uh, a major motion picture oh my you god know, funded you know like now it's my, you know but but maybe, maybe you're right maybe now is the right time mm-hmm. because they're kind of like I mean they're you know sort of these like you know legendary stars but they're not like 
you know, they're not like super, you know, like their their careers aren't at their peak right yeah. now. They're sort of like past their peak a little bit where it's like, you know, maybe this is the thing that like gets them all back on yes. top. Yes, like, and, and they're not like, you know, Harrison Ford in like Indiana Jones 6 where yeah. it's like they still got... They still got a lot, lot of gas in the tank. You know what? They need, yeah, they need to pitch this to like one of these streaming services. Get mm-hmm. like a, you know, if they, if they can make, you know, five episodes of a He-Man series, why can't we get like five... Rock solid, uh, Heat Vision yeah. and Jack. Or, or actually go right to the source. Adult Swim. Yeah. Ron Silver playing himself. <laughs> yeah, Ron Silver as himself. R- rest in peace, Ron Silver. That was, it still cracks me up. He's like, you're the bad guy in Time Cop. <laughs> <laughs> like, just like another one of those, again, cut from the same cloth, where it's like this thing was so great, yet it didn't turn into anything, was, um, Look Well. Oh, yeah. Big Look Well fan. Big Look... We love, uh... Oh, look well. <laughs> so good. I use Buzz McCool. I'm like, I'm always <laughs> like, he's like, uh, and you got to feel that uh, Tarantino was definitely watching that when he did a little uh, True Romance. Like, because uh, Adam West is, is auditioning for... Is yeah, so look well, yeah, like, just, just, yeah, I mean, look well is, like, one of those legendary, like, that might be, like, the, like, I mean, I'm more of a Heat Vision and Jack fan, but, like, Look Well might be the emblematic, like, this is, like, the, like, pilot, like, why did this never get made, you know, like, like this this seems like the one that people talk about as, yeah. like, the one. I remember Conan on his show mentioned, like... T- yeah, because it was, it was Conan O'Brien and, uh... Robert Smigel. Yeah, and Bob Smigel, you know, created this thing starring, uh, uh Adam West as, like, a, an out-of-work TV actor who had, like, a... Uh, detective show like in the 70s that's now off the air uh, but he like still kind of thinks he's a detective because like the LA police department gave him this like honorary badge so now he goes around whenever uh, he goes oh. to like crime scenes flashes the badge and like tries to solve just uh, talking about this yeah. right now I'm like I'm getting I'm <laughs> I'm sick and it's not a real serious getting like uh, because the 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 um after effects of this show are still felt like there's shows like Barry on yeah. HBO it's like kind of like dissecting and like making fun of act the acting world right yeah. and then there's like there's a show called The Grinder that was on Fox with Fred Savage and Rob Lowe where a guy I think the plot was he was like a, played a lawyer on TV yeah because a big part yeah exactly like it is I mean it's such a great concept like you could take that you know the basics of that concept and create something like really cool with it but like um but yeah because he has uh, uh like and and uh, like his character like the the adam west's character look well is like just completely clueless <laughs> inept so caught up in his own ego and and, so, and and kind of like perfect for adam west like just that delivery and like everybody like loves adam west loved him as batman and like the audience like uh you know rest in peace of course like the audience wants so bad to like have him make a comeback and yes. see him in something and it would have been like it would have been just so great like like I, I i i don't know that hollywood understood this but i know that like just like the fans under like just the, the guy on the street wants to see adam and it was such a perfect casting because he's like kind of like making fun of like his image and like the you know and that voice that delivery it was it's so good because like Conan O'Brien's such a big a big Adam West fan. Yeah, and it's like it would the, the only thing better would be like if um, if uh, Conan O'Brien made like a a George Takei centered you know Tom, show. What the, that's <laughs> you know. like the net, that would have been the net. Yeah, and and you know Burt Ward would have been on an episode. Of, sure. Of yeah. Work well, like what could uh, and 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 so it was like like you were saying like some of those other shows that have sort of taken like Barry or whatever. Uh, that you know, kind of explore a similar world. Like a big part of it was that, like, okay, now that he's no longer like on TV, uh, look well, teaches acting class, and like his students are like, you know, they they look at him as like some kind of guru, but they're you know they're like they're you know they're they're kind of out yeah like, I, and and uh, I remember like I don't know if it was I, it, it was Robert Smigel or if it was. Um, Conan O'Brien, but I know one of them was saying it in an interview that, like, they liked how on, like, Greatest American Hero or something, like, there'd be these shows where, like, you'd have 
uh, you know, like the teacher and then their group of students who like, oh. you know, they, they, you know, and, and they'd all kind of like get caught up in these like, you know, mysteries or whatever together. And so they, they like that dynamic. And so they had that in look well. That's beautiful. Like so the possibilities, Tom, all these episodes from season one of look well, they could all the people from the class could have been involved. Yeah. Like, yes. Yeah, such a great, uh, and, and again, like his students are like dumb enough to kind of like look up to him and think he's so great. But then they're all smarter than him. <laughs> like, they, they all kind of like are asking questions and kind of seeing through this, you know, I love when he's like showing a clip from his, like from a uh, band again, I think, <laughs> which is like such a great name. And it is like, you kind of feel like the, the, um, uh, Conan O'Brien, like you feel his voice because it is like s- s- the sort of name you'd see on like a Simpsons episode. Or something. Oh, when I was thinking about uh, Tarantino, I, he definitely was vibing on this because, like in True Romance, they mentioned Dick Ritchie was auditioning for the new T.J. Hooker. Yeah. So he was like, he's like, Happy Days is the next generation. And then when he's talking, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's like, yeah. next up for Happy Days next generation. He's like. Good job, uh, Mr. Lookwell. He's like, until this audition's over, I'll be referred to as Buzz McCool. <laughs> but then when they keep... Then, like, on... Um, in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, when Olfont's talking to D- DiCaprio, and he keeps... He's like... W- who was he? He's like, Papard. No, Maharis. No, t- like, when he yeah. keeps referencing... The, it's the same scene where he's like, that was Brannigan. No, that was... Yeah. Uh, it's like one for one, almost. Yeah, you I, know? I, I mean, like, the... The Look Well pilot is like so legendary, and it's kind of like legendary, you know, Hollywood or whatever. And at this point, old Hollywood. Was, I think it was like they were trying to get it going in like in the eighties, maybe. Uh, yeah, like late. I think it was ninety. Nineties. Okay. Nineteen ninety. Okay. Uh, right on the cusp. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, but like, you know, so like Tarantino has to be. You know, it's just like it's like he like his love of like sort of like Hollywood inside baseball and stuff. Yeah. When. Uh, you know when he shows up at at this like at, he he he's going undercover and going to like the racing the race car event and he's wearing like like he's like in like some nineteen ten right can't racing get goggles over. the names he's like I'm Dash Carlisle <laughs> 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 and, they, and they use the whole like you talk about using the whole buffalo too like him he has like that the wig on at the beginning when he's waiting <laughs> then he's carrying the wig <laughs> and then he gives the wig to his like housekeeper it's like mm-hmm. kills me or and then like spielberg calls for <laughs> yeah and and like by the end of it through his inept it's like a clouseau or something through his ineptness he happens to like accidentally <laughs> solve the, the case cr- it kills me too that when he's like uh he was shaking down like he was uh nickel and diming the, the uh car rental place and he's like you gotta be careful with scum you rent your cars <laughs> <laughs> I, like I think of like um, uh, the guy who played Beretta, Robert. Um, What's his name? Robert. Uh, That's not Robert Blake, is it? Yeah, Robert Blake. Oh, like Blake. Robert Blake. How like he seemed like he thought he really was Beretta. You yeah, know, he was like, like he'd be this like tough guy. You're like that guy could kill somebody. It's like the perfect, um, like Adam. It's the perfect match of like part actor and material. Um, just thinking of Tarantino again, it's like, you know, putting John Travolta in in um, in Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Because it's like there's these people that like the audience loves and wants to see more of, and like you know the Hollywood establishment has decided that oh yeah yeah nobody cares about these people anymore, and like John Travolta was one, and then and then uh, Tom Tarantino brings them back, and like, um, you know like the the world was like you know. There's there was such a hunger for an Adam West something with Adam and and like this was the perfect way to do it you know you're not gonna like like Adam West <laughs> <laughs> like I, I don't know if this is when they got the idea but like Adam West when when they came out with the Michael Keaton Batman Adam West said he was hurt that they didn't at least like call him to see if he wanted to audition to play Batman like. That just kind of says it all. Like, yeah, you know. <laughs> he would have been a, the lead on an NBC series. Mm-hmm. Like, that's yeah, awesome. playing this guy who's like kind of doesn't have a clue, sort of out of touch, <laughs> and like, and in a beautiful way. In like, a, you know, like you're, the, with that you're right, voice. beautiful because like he he got he. It's like he's getting what like that's so awesome. Like, but it, like you were talking about Happy Days, the Next Generation, and then in uh, True Romance where he's like, I'm in the new T.J. Hooker, <laughs> like. 
uh, Tarantino said with that movie, like when that movie came out, it seemed so retro because then they're like, oh, who's your favorite movie star? Burt Reynolds, you know, and then it's like, but and he had T.J. Hooker, The Next Generation, but he said, no, it's a script that he had written a long time ago that had kind of been sitting on the shelf for a while and then finally was getting made. So he said, like, it had all these old references that seemed so retro at the time, but they weren't. When he wrote them, like, Burt Reynolds still was, like, a huge movie star when he wrote it. And T.J. Hooker. T.J. Hooker, it wasn't going to be, like, the guy wasn't auditioning for T.J. Hooker, The Next Generation. He was auditioning for T.J. Hooker, but then by the time this movie got made, the uh, T.J. Hooker went off the air, so then they had to come up with T.J. Hooker, The Next Generation. The references just stayed in and then just became, like... (laughs) Yeah, they became, like, it became funny because they were a little bit dusty, a little bit retro, and made it, like, it made, like, her character seem super hip because she's, she's, like, going deep. With like with like oh. a Burt Reynolds reference, you know, or or, or yeah, t- uh, and again, T.J. Hooker in the Next Generation <laughs> is hilarious. Dude, I can't wait for us w- when we eventually do a true, true romance, romance episode. episode. Uh, maybe maybe next week we'll do yeah. true romance. I'd like to I'd like to revisit that. I love you know love that movie. He's like, I'm Dash. If anybody asks, I'm Dash Carlisle, international race car driver. <laughs> I don't like. I don't know if I ever told you this story, but like. Um, like uh, like Ed, Ed Pisker loves to tell this story, but like we were at this comic convention, and like we um, like they you know I was like oh I'm looking for the green room, or, or, or I'm looking I'm looking for like what like oh I'm a guest of this convention, I need like where where's the food at? I was asking somebody who worked there like where, where's where's the like I was told there was like a food area for for people, for guests where is that? And she's like oh yeah come this way, and so like I think she was supposed to take me to like the food area for like the comics guests <laughs> okay. which you know is is nice Probably. but she took me to the food area for like the hollywood guests now we're talking yeah exactly Hell which yeah. was like a cut above and stuff and, and again like when i was there i had seen like other comics people there. so i think it was like one of those things like you know you're you're allowed to eat there but like they're they're supposed to like kind of like not like they're supposed to kind of steer you away from it or whatever hop, so, doing a little hot <laughs> yeah, coffee rubbing yeah. elbows like like I met like like just just having lunch there, sitting casual. And like sometimes you'd be talking to somebody and then only realize afterwards like who it was and be kind of like starstruck after the fact. And then sometimes it would be kind of like oh cool. Like like I'd realize in the moment oh I'm talking to this person or that person. But like like Ed <laughs> loves to tell the story. Like I wasn't aware of this, but like we were back there and we were getting the buffet and he was telling he was saying that like right behind us was uh, <laughs> was Adam West and Danny Glover. What? <laughs> And then, like, they were, like, kind of, like, like they were kind of, like, hey, who are these two guys, <laughs> you know, eating our breakfast, you know, while we're back here waiting in line, but politely waiting in line as these two, like, nobodies are loading up their plates. <laughs> you clear out the platter, and then they're, like, after you leave, they're, like, he's, I'm sorry, Mr. Glover, we're all out of the home fries. He's, like... I'm getting too old for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so what would uh, what would Adam West? <laughs> but He's yeah, like, and, and like, only empty tin of bacon, Batman. <laughs> I mean, like I only kind of realized afterwards, like who? Because again, like like Danny Glover didn't really look like Danny Glover anymore, and Adam West didn't really look like Adam West anymore. You know, you 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 guys hold hold it up. You do the uh, the the omelet like station. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, we have to bring in a fresh batch of ingredients matt like you would you and uh, uh neither one of us has been invited back to this convention since so i don't know if like uh, if, if like uh you know uh, adam west and danny glover have like have, like got us uh, you know crossed off the invite list or whatever but well i'm i'm, pl- I'm planning on going there undercover <laughs> like uh, i have like a fake mustache over my real mustache but i mean i'm I, working it i got to have lunch with like uh the honky tonk man. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, and and uh, and like yeah, Jim Rugg, like he was there too, and he said he like didn't realize until like after the fact. Like he thought he was just kind of like talking to like some like Elvis impersonator or something, and didn't realize <laughs> after it was the honky tonk man. Uh, yeah, just like um, Nichelle Nichols from wow. Star Trek. And stuff. But anyway, so like I I I, I can't, that's all I can think of with Adam you, West now. You're uh, yeah, you, you're you're waiting in line. <laughs> you you make some kind of like uh, special request on the on the buffet, yeah, yeah. and the, they're like looking at their watch. <laughs> yeah, because it was like the the uh, the 
like I said, like the the little like the green room for the for the comics guests was 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 you know nothing to complain about. But this the, you know uh, the 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 secret green room was like it was the gourmet <laughs> shit. Oh, you know? nice! And, uh, this was like a number of years ago, so like it was kind of like it was one of those like, am I the asshole? It was like after the fact, it was kind of like. You know, what, like, like, oh, maybe we shouldn't have been back there. Like, it, it didn't seem like it would be a problem, but maybe we weren't supposed to be that. But like, since the, in the years since then, that has become more of like this sticking point, this thing that's like talked about in in in, uh, you know, sort of like on you know in in the comics world or whatever. There, you see more of a conversation about because they're kind of like, why are the comics guests treated as lesser than at a comic convention? It's a comic convention you know like why is there this like and again like i think hollywood kind of brings that with because hollywood is such a stratified like caste system a c-a-s-t-e system where it's like okay there's above the line below the line there's there, there's like a, a, a oh, real yeah. clear stratification and comics just doesn't have that comics it's like hey we're comics you know <laughs> yeah. so it is kind of it's a weird culture clash when all of a sudden it's like Sorry, you know, so, oh, we don't have your name on this. Like, they kind of bring that Hollywood attitude with them. So, like, it has become more of a thing that's discussed, and, like, and, and people sort of come forward and said there shouldn't be, like, it should be, you know, if, if someone's a guest to your show, they're a guest. Yeah. There shouldn't be, like, oh, there's this guest and th that guest. Uh, and, and so, actually, it's kind of funny talking about, like, Snake Eyes recently. One of the, the people who kind of brought this thing really, like, to, to, to like, a bigger attention, this sort of disparity was Larry Hama. Like, Larry Hama said he was at the comic convention, he was a guest of the comic convention, he wanted to go grab a coffee, he went to where he was told the green room was, he went in there, and then they told him, you can't be here, get out. Like, they're saying this to Larry Hama. You know, and, and again, like, some of these, like, stars that get the star treatment at these shows and, and are in the green room, you know, might have been in, like, a, a, a movie like might have been in a G.I. Joe movie or something you know playing a character that like Larry Hama created you know yeah. so it's kind of weird that like and, and so Larry Hama like you know went online and said like hey this is like I just wanted a cup of coffee and they're telling me to get the fuck out I'm a, and I'm a guest and so, so like that kind of like that kind of like brought that thing to a boil but it was like when I was involved in sort of a similar situation uh, you know a few years before that it's kind of I felt I felt kind of like oh I guess I you know guess I was in the wrong, maybe I shouldn't have done that or what and, and now it's like, oh yeah, hey, fuck you. <laughs> and like that's so funny though. You guys should have cleaned them out on the on the scrambled eggs. Well we kinda did. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> um yeah, he's like medallion beef medallions and stuff. Hey, um, where's the beef medallions at? <laughs> um Riggs. Would you mind citing my pancake, Mr. Glum? <laughs> 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 Sign it with syrup. <laughs> then I eat it in front of me. He's like, I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> I, I mean, it is just, it is just kind of like a weird culture clash because, like, the comics world is just so laid back and like not, you know, uh, you know, you know, with some exceptions, you know, like no attitude, you know, like kind of like, you know, everybody, you know, we're all like we're all. You know, we're all fans. You know, the the pros are fans too. You know, like that kind of. So it's it was kind of like this weird, uh, you know, culture clash or whatever to, to like see like wait what what's going on like there, there's a velvet <laughs> rope. You know, I'm 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 Rick Dreyfus on the set of Jaws. I'm like I'm not I'm not having dinner with a grip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, one of my bucket list items is to be thrown into a pile of trash by goons. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, go try. Uh, yeah, uh, get get uh, you know, cut in line at the at the buffet at the green room. See what for, happens. For like, uh, for unusually like insane guards. It's uh, you know you're carried out by uh, people in Gamorrean guard and, and uh, imperial uh, imperial guard outfits. There he is. Grab him. Are there any other last thoughts about uh, Look Well or Heat Vision and Jack? Look Well, that piece of shit show with <laughs> yeah, Adam, what Adam a, West. What a stinker! <laughs> Great job, Conan and Bob. <laughs> and yeah, like, like I understand why Higher Ground, starring the ultimate badass John Denver, didn't make it to the air. But Look Well needed genius. Look Well needed to be ten seasons. Uh, same with Heat Vision and Jack. What? A what asshole said look well shouldn't air? With both of those, it's like, they, this thing pops up a lot in like Hollywood bullshit. It's like, 
The other was like the person that gave us the green light was fired by the time like right yeah it's always like the classy thing it's like and and everyone like if that person gets fired and a new person comes in everyone always wants to like have take credit for something so right. they're like take credit for a success or like clear the decks of things that like they weren't involved in yeah it's like geez louise if you see something good they should try to foster it yeah isn't there like enough shit out there like you know, <laughs> like sh shouldn't we like yeah exactly foster the the good cool stuff. stuff but again like i think you need like some taste and some vision uh no pun intended to like sort of see you know that a how great thing. something like yeah like like that's not you know that that is not such a common thing to just just the, the uh it's you know the gift of recognition or whatever which which like that's kind of like in uh in Amadeus that's like what uh, Salieri has like he knows genius when he sees it and that's what tortures him because he see, you know he sort of sees what a genius um, uh, Mozart is you know and, and maybe maybe the rest of the world at the time doesn't see it but he sees it you know and it's kind of like that like like that 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 um, sort of vision is, is not is not you know it's not it's not so, you, you can under you can underestimate some it. dork at NBC is like look well script He's like, ew, what a stinker. Um, you know, that, that uh, John Denver pilot just I mean, what came as such a surprise. So maybe there's some other treasures yeah, like that out there. Like, I still can't get over the fact that, like, John Denver was uh, basically manhandling Mark Dikov. Yeah, like, really, just kind of, like, I don't know how he got him in that headline. Yeah. Like, he had to, like, kind of jump up. <laughs> You're right, too, Tom. Talk about a quick cut. Yeah. That, that was, we missed the part where Martin Cove exploded John Denver off of him and then, <laughs> then left the set and never came back. Yeah, I guess we're going to have to write a death scene in for, for Martin because he's not coming back. <laughs> yeah, but... And, um, it's like... Uh, uh, wait, what's it? Uh, Edward James almost said, like, with, with Battlestar Galactica, like... He wanted it to be like sort of tasteful. He wanted it to be in the tradition of like Blade Runner, you know, like he like he didn't want to do some like goofball show. And so he said like if they ever had an episode where he walks in a room and all of a sudden there's some uh, you know, uh, three-headed monster or something, he said that what he would do is just go like this and like uh, and like you know, <laughs> pass out and play dead and then just be done with the show and then they the next scene would have to be like yeah he, he saw that thing had a heart attack and died you know and then that would be it, it for his character <laughs> yeah they're like they do the same thing with, they're like if we see that headlock it was yeah. like if I see that little wiener arm <laughs> wrapping around my head <laughs> they're like uh, yeah when, I, when I'm thinking of like the ultimate badass like you said I think of John Denver in Higher Ground he's like like a he's he's like out of control libido and like well talking about like Adult Swim and ahead of its time like that I mean that that is basically that like Chris Elliott uh, oh my a you know a, a knowingly comedic version of this John like if it, with with a sl what? slight yes. tinkering here and there like that John Denver thing could have been like a look well or something. yes oh my god. Well, but again, it wouldn't have gotten on the air in, yeah, in well, either case because well, shitty stuff doesn't make it to the air and great stuff doesn't make it to the air. My my favorite episode of the Total Rico show, I think, is uh, us breaking down higher ground. Yeah, it's good. And, and uh, you've only seen the first half of it, so wait yeah. till you see the rest. So um, you've been watching the... the you know, pilot episode of Total Recall. I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, and Fantastic Four Grand Design. I'm Matt Zioli. And uh, check out my uh, my Patreon. and Go to patreon.com and search Tom Scholey and see all the comics I'm currently working on. And uh, follow me on Twitter at Tom Scholey. You can follow me on Instagram at cinema underscore tomb. And follow me on Instagram at Tom underscore Scholey. I got an audition, Tom, okay. for a mash... 2035 <laughs> yeah yeah mash the next generation they're like they're still fighting the korean war